Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, this is Rob Rosa. Hopefully your favorite real estate broker. All right, my friends. So this morning, Monday morning, it is time for market stats, right? It is time to review. Well, what's going on in the real estate market, Rob? You know, you say you're an expert. You say you know what's going on. Well, why don't you tell us? So I am here today to tell you, right? And Melissa, thank you so much for joining us. Um, John, I appreciate you. And so one of the things that I want you to do is as I'm going through these market stats, if you have questions, if you have things that you want to review, that you want to talk about, all you need to do is let me know. Hey, yo, thank you so much for joining us. So what we're planning on doing now, before we go over the Monday market stats, I like to have a little bit of fun, all right? And so a little bit of the fun that we are going to have this morning is that we are going to talk about, yes, cities and what their nicknames are. I know you're excited about it. I know you can't handle it. You're like, are you serious, Rob? And the answer is yes. Hey, Veronica, Korean, Linz, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so I'm going to ask you some quiz questions and let's see how many of you know what's going on with the cities and some of their nicknames. So here we're going to start off with a little bit of an easy one, right? I'll give you an easy one for those who are into international types of things. All right. Let's talk about what is the eternal city. Okay. So put it in the comments. Let's see if you know. What city is nicknamed the Eternal City? All right. So if you know, and Rob, thank you so much for your likes. Karan, thank you so much for your likes. We appreciate you. Put in your comments. Who knows who is, what city is the Eternal City? All right. I'm going to wait about five seconds. Let's see if you can figure it out. Five, four, three, two, one. Sal, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Okay, so the eternal city is Rome. Okay, Rome, Italy. Let's go on to another one. What city, hey Jackie, thank you so much for joining us. What city is nicknamed Beantown? So if you know what city is nicknamed Beantown, put it in the comments, right? And thank you so much, all of you, Cattle Whisperer. Thank you so much for your, your likes and your shares and all that good stuff. So if you know nicknames of cities, what city is nicknamed Beantown? All right. I'll give you a couple more seconds. And thank you so much for your likes and shares. Ready? You got five, four, three, two, one. Beantown, the nickname for Beantown. Yes. Rob Rosa, you got it. It is Boston. All right. Woo! All right. Here's a little bit of a harder one. And if you get this one, you know your geography. You're doing pretty darn good. Right? So, what city is nicknamed the Gateway to the Americas? That's right. What city is nicknamed the gateway to the Americas. Let's see if you can get this one. Come on, I know you can do it. And for those of you who are on here, I appreciate your likes. I appreciate your shares, right? Let's get out there. It's Monday morning. It's 8.30 in the morning. Some of you might be like, I don't have time for this, Rob. I'm busy. I got to get ready for the week. Well, you know what? Let's have some fun first thing on Monday morning. Yes, I am that person that maybe is gonna put the smile on your face to get started in this work week. So, what city is nicknamed the Gateway to the Americas? All right, my friends, I'm gonna give you five seconds. Let's see what you come up with. Five, four, three, two, one. So the city that's nicknamed the Gateway to the Americas is Miami. All right, we're going to do one more. And this one is going to be, hey, Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. This one is going to be a little bit harder. And if you get it, I will be pretty impressed. Hey, Madi, thank you so much for joining us. This is, um, <coughs> 
a city. I will tell you it's in North America. Okay. So it's in North America. And the nickname for this city is the City of the Saints. Right? The City of the Saints. So if you're watching this, what city has a nickname, the City of the Saints? Let's see if you can put it in your comments. If you think you know it, would be awesome. And thank you so much for all your likes and shares. I appreciate all of you. City of the Saints. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? You know, those are for the our, us older people. We know what that means. Bueller? Anyone? Okay. So, City of the Saints nickname is Montreal, my friends. Hey, Trainwreck, thank you so much for joining us. And Reed, Toma, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. So what we're doing is we're having a little bit of fun here this Monday morning. We were talking a little bit about nicknames for cities. I think I'm going to do this a little more often because I had fun with it, right? And then if you had fun with it, put it in your comments. Put it in the chat. So now what we're going to actually do is we are going to go over some real estate market stats that's right some real estate market stats let's kind of go over some of this stuff right and you know for those of you what we're going to do is we're going to kind of try to get you um so that you can see exactly what i'm talking about here right and so here we are right real estate market stats Okay, so this basically this stat right here, and I know it might be hard for some of you to actually see, right? But what we're talking about is real estate market activity, right? Now, what I focused on here was basically just because it's easier to get the weekly stats by county. I can get monthly stats by state, you know, meaning like for me, it would be the state of Connecticut, right? I can get those easier on a monthly standpoint, and I can get national stats easier on a monthly standpoint, right? But right now, basically, what we're talking about is for weekend in November 4th, you know, and this is data current as of November 14th, is let's talk about Hartford County and what's going on with real estate in Hartford County, right? What's the latest and greatest for real estate here? Okay, so let's talk about some of this stuff. And it might be, like I said, it might be hard for you to see, but I'm here to review this with you. So as of right now, builder confidence continues to wane because of high mortgage rates. You know, we really don't have a lot of new buildings that are being built here in Hartford County, right? It's kind of hard for them to do that um, because of the, you know, what we're being told, of course, is like the, the supplies, right? The materials are so, so, so expensive. But um, at the same time, it's been hard because of the interest rates. So according to the National Association of Home Builders, builder confidence in newly built single homes fell four points, right? Making it the third decline. And thank you so much for joining us, right? I appreciate all of you for joining us. So it's technically the third monthly decline of um, building new homes here in Hartford County in Connecticut. And that makes it a little bit harder, right? Now, let's talk a little bit about, well, what's going on with single family homes as far as um, homes that are owned right now that are already built. And thank you so much for your likes and your shares. Tanya, I appreciate you joining us. Cohen, I appreciate you joining us. You know, if you have some comments, please put them in there. Matthew Cross, and I see you got there in New Orleans. So you, you know, I know it's a few minutes that it came in late, but you, my friend, got the five stars for the day. So I appreciate that. All right. So for the week ending November 4th, new listings actually increased 8% right, to 149 listings, right? So again, this is on a weekly basis. We've mostly seen new listings on a monthly basis decrease, 
Um, but I guess we had a little spark, and I did myself personal. Personally, I had a, I have a beautiful new home we put on the market in Middlefield, Connecticut, going for five hundred eighty thousand dollars. I have a, a three-family home that I put on the market in New Britain, and I have another single-family home that I put on the market in East Hartford. So when we talk about okay, maybe for that. First week in November, we had a little bit of spike that people are trying to do something last minute. I could see that happening. Now, for this week, pending sales decreased, right? They decreased 12.9% to 142 homes here in Hartford County. And then inventory, exactly how many homes are on the market. So right now, there's, um, or you know, there were 951 um, homes that were on the market, which is a decrease of 25% compared to the year before. Now, I mean, compared to the week before. That's pretty crazy, right? All right. So we got that going for us. Now, how about for the total month of October as far as the latest numbers? Well, the median sales price increased. So here in Hartford County, the median sales price increased to 12.4% to $354,000. The days on market decreased 25% to 21 homes. The percentage of list price received increased. So right now, Homes were selling at 105.1% on average. So if you take all the homes that were put on the market, right, and you kind of think about, all right, well, you know what? What's going on as far as the actual closing compared to the list price? Well, they're selling for 5.1% more money. Okay, so this is telling you something, you know, if you put it on the market the right way, ask for the right price. And thank you so much for all your likes and shares. I really, really appreciate you. You put it on the home, the market the right way um, for that right location, for that right product, you're going to sell on average 5.1% higher than your asking price. Okay. And so now this is a pretty big number. Hey, Kelly, this is a pretty important number. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Months supply. So I have been told by more than one real estate guru that if it was a, if it was a product, meaning, um, or a month that the market, if the, if it was a month that the market was balanced between buyers and sellers, we would have about eight to nine months supply of inventory. Well, what does that mean? It basically means that we can go like eight or nine months without having to worry about running out of homes to sell. And if you look there right in the middle of my screen, well, what does it say? Months supply decreased to 1.7, right? So it decreased 5.6% to 1.7. So that's a huge, huge decrease. That's something that we probably, you know, again, we need to just keep an eye on. And it just shows you the power that the sellers have in the marketplace. It shows you the power because... There's just not enough homes on the market. And Dennis, thank you so much for joining us. S. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. So, you know, these are the numbers that I'm kind of going over. We're talking a little bit about what's going on in the marketplace, um, you know, some of the metrics and so forth. So let's get into this a little bit deeper. I mean, we have a few minutes. Let's talk a little bit more, right, and see, well, what's going on in the last three months, right? So this number right here, is basically a number that's showing you, okay, single family homes. And this again is for the state of Connecticut, right? And specifically Hartford County. You can see that single family homes in the last three months, right? How many listings have come on board? Well, you know, once again, we basically have 149 which is, you know, definitely a little bit of an increase, but it's still below the three-month average. You see, the three-month average of new listings per week, okay, is about 151, 
right? And there's that data all the way to the right side, right? 151. And last week we had 149. So we're still below on the data just a little bit to make people understand, you know, to help you understand, well, what's going on in the marketplace here. And Arrow, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, the Fashionable Farmer, appreciate you joining us, all right? Now here is, you know, again, the historical new listing activity, and you can see the darker line, right, is the single family homes, and the light blue line are town townhouses and condos, okay? So if we look at kind of seasonally, and this report helps us to go back all the way to 2015, you know, we had a high of over 400, over 450 new homes on the market for that one particular week. That's amazing. You know, if you look all the way over there to the left, and as you go to the right, you can see it's just once 2020 came along, the pattern got lower. The pattern stopped. Okay. Now let's talk about pending sales here in Hartford, right? The last three months. Well, you know, if we go all the way to the right and you see right here, that dotted line on the chart, this is last year. One year ago, single family homes, right? As far as pending sales, we were higher, right? And this year we're a little bit lower. Now, the three-month average is 137 pending homes for sale. You can see that number right there. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Cannoli. Hey, Catherine. Thank you so much for joining us. Right? You can see that for single-family homes, the three-month average is 137 in this past uh, week of data that we have up until November 4th is 142. Right? So we're a little bit higher than that. And I appreciate, once again, I appreciate all your likes and shares. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us, right? All right, let's talk about, and here's the chart for historically pending sales, okay? And you can see here, since the wonderful world of about 2021, it's just gone down, 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 because the slope, and you can see the slope is down because of the fact that again, we have inventory issues. And here we go, the wonderful world of inventory. You know, the story after a while, my friends, the story does get a little bit old. I'm not gonna lie to you, right? I'm telling you what we keep on hearing, but you know, what we're doing is we're trying to work on ways and think about ways in which we can make people understand, you know, it might be actually a great time to put your property, your investment property, your um, three-family home, even your commercial property, might be a great time to put it on the market because of the fact that you have such less competition. Like, why would you want to wait? Like, some people are saying, well, I'm going to wait. Well, why would you want to wait when you're going to have so much more competition in the future? And you can see here back in 2015, look at that. We had about 4,500 homes here in Hartford County for sale, and, you know, at that peak of the summer of 2015 in the last, you know, this is the peak of the last eight years. Okay. The last eight years. Isn't that amazing? Okay. And that was right about there. But you know, you can see every summer is the peak where it's gone up and then it's gone down and it's gone up. But you see what happened right around 2020. Everybody said, oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to sell my home. And, you know, we have had a, a couple of good years, you know, as far as real estate sales and really helping people because we've had a lot of people who have decided that they do want to be able to... Um, take advantage um, or they do want to be able to find a home that they love that they can just work at home from. But, you know, there's also a lot of people who have just kind of like put their, um, you know, heels in the ground and said, I'm not going to move and that's it. All right. So days on market, we can see that here in October, right, for single family homes, 21 days on the market on average, um, for townhouses and condo, hey, Joel, be 14 days. And you can see on average, it's 24. 
if we look over, you know, for the last year. But for this month in particular, meaning October, that we got the data from, we're talking about 21 days on the market. All right. So that might be something, of course, to think about. Right. And the story, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about median sales price. So this is the point at which half the sales sold for more and half sold for less. And we don't consider seller concessions in these numbers. And please, as you come up with questions, things you want to talk about, things you want to review, please make sure you put it in the comments because I love to be able to go over it with you, right? And of course, I appreciate all your likes and shares. Michael, John, Joel, thank you so much for joining us. So the median sales price is $354,000, okay? 12.4%. Hey, last minute, thank you so much for joining us here in Connecticut. Median sales price for the month of October. And this is actually higher than the average because you can see the average... It's $335,750, I mean, right? And so we are, meaning the last month, we did sell homes for better than the average of the last year. So which you know, basically tells us that's what's happening, my friend, is the prices are going up, right? Even though the interest rates are going up, the inventory is so low, there's so much competition that the prices are still going up, okay? And lastly, my friends, what I wanted to go over with you is this whole thing about housing affordability. So how much do you know about housing affordability? What does that mean to you, right? I mean, I know you'll probably understand the words, right? But let's talk about this actual index and how it's defined. Basically, an index of 120, the number 120, means that the median, right, the middle number, half of the people are higher, half of them are lower, the median household income was 120% of what is necessary to qualify for the median price home under prevailing interest rate. So a higher number means greater affordability. And if you look, right, especially for single family homes, a higher number means greater affordability. Well, what happened? 2021, we were at 190. 2022, interest rates started inching up. 118. 2023, 99. And that 99, it actually was at a low in August of 98, if you look all the way to the right, it was at a low. Um, and then September and October, we were at 99. So if we kind of look about at this housing affordability, housing affordability index chart, well, you can see since 2015, you know, it's been going for single family homes anywhere between 250-ish. Right, look at that blue line. If you kind of look at the the um, border, up to three hundred and thirty, right? And it's so it's been there two fifty to three thirty. And again, the higher number means greater affordability. But if you look, what happened in the beginning of two thousand twenty two with this wonderful economy, with the wonderful things that the government has decided to do with interest rates? is everything just slammed to the ground, right? We actually got um, we actually got to that point where these numbers, again, the, look at the black number, right? If we look at the black number for single family, we, we went under 100 this year for housing affordability, under 100. And that, my friends, is something that makes things pretty difficult for people who want to be able, right? People who want to be able to buy their own home. And so that's something that we strongly, strongly, strongly have to consider as being a potential issue um, in the marketplace and thinking about, well, what is it that we can do 
to make things better for everyone so that people can get to the point because you know how it goes. We want you to uh, hit that American dream, right? We want you to get to the point that you are living where you want to live, that you're happy, that you're excited, and that you're able to move forward, all right? So that pretty much is, and Chris, thank you so much for joining us, Jackie, Pokemono, MZ. That's everything I wanted to go over with you today. I wanted to do a little fun quiz with you on nicknames for cities. We went over some market data, so now you know that stuff. I truly, truly appreciate you. I want to wish you a very happy holiday week. If there's anything I can help you with that you have questions about that you want to talk about, you just let me know and we can reach out to you every step of the way and help you get to where you want to be. So God bless you. This is Rob Rosa. Hopefully your favorite real estate broker. Hey, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you and I appreciate you, my, um, your comments, my man. We'll talk to you later, everyone. Have a great one. And once again, God bless you. Bye.